Hey, welcome to Draft Academy. My name is Mike. In this tutorial, I want to talk to you guys about exception handling in Ruby. Now, sometimes when you're writing your Ruby programs, you're going to come across certain errors. So a lot of times when we get an error in Ruby, it'll crash our program. In fact, every time we get an error in Ruby, it's going to crash our program. And sometimes when you're writing Ruby code that you want to be able to execute for, you know, months and months or even like a couple years at a time, you want to make sure that you're able to handle any errors or exceptions that pop up in your program. And I'm going to show you guys how you can do that today using something called a rescue. So let's go ahead and trigger an error in our program. One of the easiest ways to do this is to divide something by zero. So if you're familiar with uh, you know, math, you can't actually divide something by zero. So if I said like num is equal to 10 divided by zero, when I run this program, you'll see over here we're getting a bunch of red, we're getting an error. It says divided by zero, zero division error. So Ruby's telling us you had a zero division error, right? Um, another error that we could use, and I'm actually just going to comment this guy out right here, would be uh, trying to access an invalid index in an array. So we could try to access an array index using something like a string. So I just have this array over here of lucky numbers. If I was to say like lucky nums like zero, this is going to be fine. This will give me this four. But if I said lucky nums dog, I can't actually pass a string into here. So I'm going to get another error. And over here it says no implicit, implicit conversion of string into integer. So I'm getting a type error. And there's a bunch of these different errors in Ruby, you know, that handle a bunch of different situations going wrong. But the point is that if a situation like this comes up in my program, a lot of times I'm going to want it to not break the program. Like I'm going to not want it to explode the program and then, you know, the program is done running. So we can actually watch out for some of these common errors and we can do what's called catching them. And when we catch an error or we catch an exception, that means we're basically saying to the program like, hey, we know something went wrong, but we're handling it and it's all good. Don't worry about it. You don't need to crash and burn. So I'm going to show you guys how you can do that. And really the most basic way to do it is um, just to use something called rescue and begin tags. So over here, I'm just going to say begin and down below here, I'm going to say rescue. And then down here, I'm going to say end. So this is the basic structure. Any code that I think is going to throw an error or an exception in my program, I want to put it inside of these, this little begin block. So for example, this division by zero, let's grab this and we can put this in here. As long as this code, like the code that we think might break is inside of that begin block, then if something does go wrong here, then it's basically just going to go down to the code inside this rescue block and execute that. So I can say down here, like puts division by zero error. So now when I run my program, instead of the program just exploding, it's going to say division by zero error. So the program actually didn't break. The program didn't stop executing. Our program just handled the error and defaulted down here and basically printed out, hey, there is a division by zero error. Here's the thing, the same thing is going to work for these lucky numbers. So if I was to grab this lucky numbers and I put this over here and I'm actually going to comment this out. Now, when I run this program, you'll see that the lucky numbers is going to do the same thing. So over here, it says division by zero error. Here's the problem though. Let's say I have more than one piece of code inside of this begin block that has the potential to break the program. Right. So these two blocks of code will break the program. Right. We we know for a fact that they will. But let's say that they'll only break the program some of the time. Right. So maybe we have a program where the user can enter in two numbers to divide. And sometimes they're going to enter into zero, in which case we're going to have to handle this error. And maybe sometimes they won't. The problem is that if I just put division by zero error down here, this is just going to catch any error that gets thrown. So it'll catch this error up here. It'll also catch this error. And remember, those are two different types of error. One was a division by zero error. One was a type error. So there's actually a way that we can specify specific rescue blocks for specific types of errors. So for example, that division by zero, if I wanted, I could come down here and I could say rescue, and then I can just type out zero division error. And remember, this is basically the error that got thrown when we divided by zero. And so here's the thing. When I run this num 10 divided by zero thing, 
it's going to get caught by this division by zero error when I run the program. But if I was to run this lucky numbers, so if I just uncommented this, this isn't going to get caught. So this is still going to break the program. You'll see over here, we're still getting a type error. So actually what I could do is I could create another rescue block for that specific type of error. And we could just say type error. And then down here inside of this rescue block, we could, you know, print out a message like wrong type. And so now this lucky numbers with the dog index is going to get caught and it's going to say wrong type. So a lot of times in Ruby, you're going to want to be specific about what errors you want to catch. And so basically what this means is in the case of a zero division error, I could do something. I could put a bunch of code inside of here. That's going to do something in the case of a type error. I could do something else. Another thing we can do is we can actually take the error that got thrown and we can store it in a variable. So I could say type error and equal sign and a greater than sign. And then I could just type in the name of a variable where I want to store the exception that got thrown. So I'm just going to call it E and down here I could actually print out E. So when this type error gets called, instead of just typing out, Hey, wrong type, it's going to tell us what the actual error was. So it says no implicit conversion of string into integer. And a lot of times this can be useful because different situations will cause this type error to run. In other words, like different stuff up here might cause the type error. So by storing the error inside of a variable called E and printing it out, we can tell the user exactly what went wrong. So that's pretty useful. And this is optional. You don't have to do this, but a lot of times you're going to want to, and it's usually a good practice if you're writing a, a script or a piece of code that's going to be running for long periods of time. For example, if you need a piece of code to be running for like a couple months or like even a couple years at a time, like on some server somewhere, using these rescue tags is extremely useful because you'll basically prevent your program from terminating or prevent your program from blowing up when stuff goes wrong. Um, and just one more thought on this and you know, different people have different opinions about this, but generally it's a good idea to specify the specific errors that you want to catch. Um, it's usually not a good idea just to use rescue. The problem is because this is just going to catch any error under the sun. And so a lot of times like you're going to want to be able to respond to individual errors differently. So this is kind of like almost too broad in a sense because you're just casting a huge net and catching every error in your entire program. But if you want to use that, then it's available to you. So that's the basics of using those begin and rescue tags in order to stop our programs from blowing up. Hey, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please leave a like and subscribe to Draft Academy to be the first to know when we release new content. Also, we're always looking to improve. So if you have any constructive criticism or questions or anything, leave a comment below. Finally, if you're enjoying Draft Academy and you want to help us grow, head over to draftacademy.com forward slash contribute and invest in our future.